So we're heading into another lockdown and I think for so many people life at the moment feels very chaotic and very uncertain. I mean life even at the best of times is hard enough without layering onto it all of the insecurities and the anxieties that come with the current global situation. The reality is we have very little control over our external circumstances at the moment and that level of uncertainty and not feeling in control can be so anxiety provoking and so distressing for so many people and unfortunately when we feel distressed and overwhelmed we have a tendency to get caught up in very negative ways of thinking and viewing the world. We get caught up in catastrophic predictions about how things are going to be which aren't beneficial to us and actually exacerbate our feelings of anxiety and we end up becoming so overwhelmed and so flooded with negative emotion that we turn to negative coping mechanisms which again feed into this cycle of anxiety and just feeling negative about oneself and negative about life in general. Now the reality is coronavirus is very real so any intense emotional response that you are having is valid. I mean ultimately you feel how you feel. There's no point hammering yourself or feeling ashamed for your emotions because ultimately they reflect your response to what is going on around you. However that being said when we're in a place of high emotional intensity we don't tend to be thinking all that rationally and the more we can learn to to tolerate our emotions, to care for them, to nurture them, to listen to them, the less likely they are to suffocate us and to completely cloud our judgment. Because at the moment, we need to be in a place of some level of rationality in order to make decisions that are going to get us through what the next few months are going to present us with. So what can we do that will be beneficial to us over the next few weeks? Well, we need to look at our basic self-care. I mean, we need to make sure that we're getting a certain amount of exercise, that we are getting adequate sleep and that we are looking after our hydration and nutrition. I know the temptation is to just drink all of the alcohol and eat all of the crap. However, that being said, doing so may feel good in the moment but it has very negative consequences in the long run and it's about making choices that are based on long-term gains as opposed to short-term escapism. Routine is extremely beneficial. I mean, trying to have some sort of structure in your days, even though you may be working from home, trying to get up at a regular time, going to bed at a regular time, ensuring that you have set meals, ensuring that you stick to some sort of exercise schedule. It's just so important. We do very well with some sort of structure in our lives. And this includes at the weekends as well, because again, the temptation is just to let the days blend into each other. And it's important important that we are present in our lives, that we are doing things that bring our attention to the here and now. Trying to find some sort of significance, our purpose, our meaning in your life is really important at the moment when everything feels a little bit bleak and a little bit hopeless. Now, this can be something really insignificant, you know, kind of phoning somebody that you haven't spoke to in a while and that you feel could do with the chat or putting out some food for the birds or the squirrels or whatever. Just anything that makes you feel like as if you are doing something purposeful, that your day just isn't meaningless. And again, meaning Meaning and purpose is what we make it. We have to look for opportunities to create it, particularly in the current climate connecting with others is vital and I mean this can also become part of your sense of contribution you know reaching out to people that maybe you haven't spoken to for a while or saying a kind word to somebody that wasn't necessary but is just a nice thing to do I mean again the more things that we do that make us feel connected and that make us feel significant that make us feel like as if we have something to contribute to the well-being of those around us the more likely we are to feel good in ourselves Getting as much fresh air and as much exposure to nature as possible is a fantastic idea. I mean, again, we need to keep our senses revigorated. And when we're in nature, we tend to feel at home in ourselves. And it's so important that we try to come out of our heads and into our body at the moment. This can be achieved also through things like body scans and yoga. 
Developing a mindfulness practice is also beneficial when it comes to alleviating the symptoms of anxiety or feelings of despair. Now, people sometimes confuse mindfulness with meditation and mindfulness is a way of life. It's a way of living, whereas meditation is one of the tools we use to develop a more mindful mindset. And mindfulness is basically about being present, about paying attention to our life as it is, about being in the current moment, about living intentionally with curiosity and with kindness. And the more we live in the moment, the less likely we are to be up in our head creating all of these stories about what life is going to be like or how worthless we are or how terrible things are and again it's just about bringing yourself back into the present moment now this is a skill it's not something that comes easily to people initially however the more we try to create even 30 seconds to one minute of contemplation and being in our own bodies a day the more likely we are to get stronger at it the more likely we are to recognize when we're away in those negative thoughts and negative predictions and bringing ourselves back to the safety of our body at any given moment. Setting intentions, particularly before a meditation practice, can be a lovely way of bringing ourselves into a different perspective, basically asking for help in the current situation or asking for ways in which you can be a more considerate person that you can contribute more that you can be kinder to yourself and again it's about self-compassion but compassion for others at the minute everyone is in the same predicament and the more unified we are the more we start thinking about all that is good as opposed to all that is terrible the more we try to find appreciation for what we have the more likely we are to develop the resilience that is required to come through this but we also have to find understanding for what is going wrong you know and it's getting that balance between compassion and acceptance but also understanding that we have a certain amount of autonomy we can make choices that will make our life feel and look a little bit better even if those choices seem so insignificant and it's making those choices and it's living intentionally and it's living in integrity and just living liberating yourself from this anxiety because again that can be all consuming it can just tear you apart and nobody deserves to live in a state of fear if you would like to get in touch with me about any uncertainty that you are experiencing or if you're feeling high anxiety get in touch with me on my website it's fundamentals.ie